Thank you. Hello. Hello. Hey. Good to see you guys. Let, let's start because it's a free tight schedule. There are more people coming in. You can sit down in front so I don't feel that lonely here. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's start. Let's start with a with a story. And um, a story starts when uh, when I was 11 years old. That's me on the on the left side. Um, thank you. Come over, please. Sit down. Thank you. So at 11 years old, something happened that changed. Um, once again, my life it happened many times after that. My, our parents, this is my elder brother, Orlando. Our parents and our grandparents, they gave us a computer. And it was, was in 1983. And the computer in Brazil, where I'm from, was very expensive. It was almost the price of a car. And we were very delighted and very happy um, to have a computer at home. But at the same time, we, we felt bad because it's, it's a lot of money for a middle-class family to invest on. And so I made a pact with my, with my brother and that we would never ask our parents to give us money to buy a, a new computer. So what we did at this age, we, we're, we started to program. We just um, auto-didact. We just um, uh, learned ourselves to program. And then we start to go to Ipanema and Copacabana, their neighborhoods in Rio de Janeiro, to, um, to sell our services in, in terms of uh, stock control in, in companies. And they, they would look at us and, but who is doing the program? Like programming is like something really difficult. And so your, your dad is doing this, right? No, we're doing this. So let's do something. If, if, you, if you don't trust us, uh, the first month is free. And we, we do... We, 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 set up everything, we, we, do your, um, we do the software control, and if you don't like, you don't pay, and we leave, but if you like, it's 20% more expensive. How about that? So they were happy with this, and we were happy with this. When I was 13, we, have already, we had already four computers at home. So, so it's when I realized that I, I liked computing a lot. I, I, I used to dream in code, I think, Maybe some of you could dream in code, and then you can see what, what you're doing. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So a little bit more on the background. So I'm, I'm from uh, Rio de Janeiro. And in, in Rio, I work for a global television as the third largest uh, TV company in the world. And it's um, NBC, CBS, and, and that's uh, global television. And I, what I worked there was on... Um, I was in the, the computer science, um, electrical engineering, computer science department, and um, I did um, a software for the um, World Cup. And uh, this is not this is not us. This is not our presentation. So keep <laughs> stay stay with this screen, please. This is this is nothing to do with the presentation. Thank you. This this is this is a good one. So. Um, um, I, 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 I'll talk about this dream later. So I work at a global television. I work for uh, IBM. I work for uh, Major League Baseball, the, 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 the baseball company um, in the US. So I was also a uh, delivery guy. I was like delivering stuff. I also was a DJ in Brazil. I was the vice president, vice president of the baseball state league. Um, I was in computer graphics. I was doing stuff. Then um, I moved to New York. I started to do uh, an art major in Brazil. And then I moved to New York, to New York University, to study their interactive telecommunications program. That it was um, art and technology. I, was, I, was a, I think I was, uh, was a good engineer. In my things, they, they worked perfectly. But they looked so bad. They, they were awful. Then I, uh, I wanted to start to study art. And then my, the things that I was doing, they, they, they looked nicer, and then, and then they would work fine. And then I studied um, communications, so they would have a meaning. So it was like a different things going on. So I had a piece on the MoMA in the Museum of Modern Art. Um, I had like art technology projects uh, in, in many countries. And then after 9-11, I moved to Mexico City. And um, our company, on the third month that I was there, was acquired by the largest out-of-home entertainment group in Latin America. So 
we're like a small company, 25 kids. And then after three years, we were 450 people. So it was like amazing. And I, 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 but I, I didn't know the name of our, you know, employees. And, and, and so th this was not as good. So I'm still in Mexico, but I have my own company now um, called Levitation. It's a creative technology company. But I wanna, what I want to talk about is that the things that we dream with technology, probably we can achieve. There, there are so many tools. And what I do, I don't go and make a product and leave out of the product. Maybe I should be doing this. What I do is, is to find a way of telling a story and a need to tell a story and then I tell a story in a different way. And usually I try it to be memorable. So it'll be like a, a little bit of a show and tell. Um, so I was in Mexico and, and our company is in Mexico and we opened offices in San Diego and Miami. And also we opened offices in Vancouver and, and now we're just opened uh, Rio de Janeiro. So we're a four year old company. But what we found out is if we find people that think the same way as we, we can you know, partnership with them and then be global. And there's so many cool things about doing this. So I'll, I'll start another part of the storytelling now. That's uh, what, what do we need to be entrepreneur? It doesn't mean that we're businessmen. Entrepreneur means that we have to be creative, that we have to dream, this is so important, and then we have to innovate. And let's talk about some definitions. So innovation is to bring something new, right? And a new, a new idea, a new method, or um, a new device. And we have to exploit new, new ideas and make them come true. If they are not true, if, if they are just an idea, it's not innovation, it's just a great idea. So we have to make them come true and we can, we can do this. And we use a lot of creative technology. That's the disruptive use of technology. That's the best way of telling a story because other way, uh, otherwise it's just the same way of telling a story. So going back to the entrepreneur, we, we have to search for new challenges and find a way um, to, to accomplish. Okay, so let's first talk about creativity, okay? Um, I probably you heard people saying, oh, I'm not a creative person, and, and, um, but, but of course we are all creative. The problem is, okay, this is like statistics. Children, they are considered creative, but they, when they go to school, and, and, and they, they, they kind of like stop being creative. At the age of seven, just 10% of the kids are considered creative. And just 2% of us, we are considered creative. And this is boo. You know, it's, it's, we are all creative. We have like different ways of expressing our creativity. But what do we, we, we take from that? So that non-creative behavior is learned. We learn how to not be creative. When, when maybe our parents were at school, they say, don't do this or don't behave this way. Um, you're cutting our creativity. And this is for, very important for me. Thinking is more important than knowing. When we go to the school or the university, when, when we leave, part of what we learned, it's already like obsolete. A lot of people, a lot of things changed. So it's more important to, to, to think than to know. Very, very important. Okay, what do we want with creativity is we want innovation, not instant perfection. And we see our friends from Google doing this. You know, who here had an account in Google Wave? And we don't have it anymore. And, and it was like really a, a flaw. But wow, they, they made so many cool things that it was still using it. We have to know our audience. We have to know who are we talking or telling this story to. This is so important because um, we've been doing projects uh, to kids, like in theme parks, and we, we're doing, and sometimes we're sending the same message to grown ups, the same message, but we have to navigate into storytelling and the narrative. It's very important to know who are we talking to. Another thing is to draw limits. Uh, the creativity loves constraints. So if, if I come to you and say, be creative, you're going to ask, what? what? What should I do? So we, we have to establish boundaries in creativity. And when, in publicity, um, we usually go to the client and, and have like a, a brief. When we, we get a, 
a story from the client what he wants to accomplish. This is very important. And be creative with new ideas and be innovative. Uh, build those ideas and expect the worst. We've been working, I, I designed a couple of uh, theme park attractions for kids and they're much smarter than, than us. So you build this whole thing with technology and, and, and the kids, they go there and the behavior is totally opposite that we were expecting. And you have to redesign. It's not telling the kids how they should behave. It's to redesign what you did to a normal or more intuitive behave. This is what we, we have to do. So um, I want to do something with you guys. And have you heard about Chindogu? Okay. There, there, there's some books called the Useless Japanese Inventions. You should go and, and get those books. They're really cool, interesting books. And uh, what's behind this is called Chindogu. Okay, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of Chindogu. You know, I have like a baby boy at home. And he starts like to crawl. And at the same time, I need to clean the house. So why not give him like a special clothes? And, and, and why are he's like crawling? He's cleaning the house. Pretty smart, huh? So, you, just, you, you, you know, maybe you come from the countryside and you miss the nature and you can have a little bit of it at home and then you design something like this. More chindogus. You have, like, new shoes. It's raining. It rains a lot here in London. So what do you want to do? Like, put an umbrella. That's obvious. Or, you know... Um, you have the, 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 the alarm clock. You know when you, you, uh, you, you, the snooze. So when you snooze, you go back to sleep and, and you know, and, and it, it might turn off and might, you know, turn on the snooze. But this way, you feel pain. So you are waking up. So you wake up when you do this. Or, you know, when, when people are scratching your back and they never get the, the, the spot. So what do you do? You, you get a, a card and you say H3. And then, no, 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 it's H4. Ah, oh, yeah. You know, this is a great idea. This is, these are Chindogu ideas. So what are you going to do? Those are the rules of Chindogu. We're going to do a small exercise now. Uh, we're going to design our own, your own Chindogus. So cannot be for real, real use. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not putting the umbrellas on my shoes, or, but they must exist. It's not something material, something that you might um, uh, uh, implement. Um, the spirit of anar anarchy is very important. Um, there are tools for everyday life. They are not for sale. It's not something that you, you go to the store and, and you saw something being sold. Um, humor is not just the reason. Oh, it's, it's funny, so let me do it. It's, no, it must have a, a purpose. It's not propaganda. It's not taboo. It's not something that you're thinking about patenting and no prejudice. So what are you going to do now is... Um, every two of you, or three, uh, please, could you help me take one and, and pass around? And if you have a pen, and this is paper, if you remember, <laughs> or you can use your tablet <laughs> if you don't feel comfortable with the pen and the paper. But um, take this, and, and let's, let's do this exercise. Using these rules, you see everyone here is creative. So, but, but it's important to make in groups, not, not by yourselves. Uh, the multidisciplinary thing is very, it makes, um, turns the project in very rich project. So if you get a bunch and just pass around, let's do a Chindogu exercise. We have three minutes. And um, talk, yeah, uh, among yourselves. I, I want some uh, cool Chindogu ideas. I'm going to go back to the inspirational ones that I put here. Don't use the same, of course. Don't use my baby to do um, the same thing. So, Chingu Dogu ideas. We have two minutes, 15 seconds. So, talk. It's important to talk. Come up with an idea. Refine your idea. I, I see some smirks. Um, yeah, design your Chingu Dogu. Nice. Everyone is doing this. You can draw. You can write. Oh, thank you. Some action here. Jumping rolls to Chindogu ideas. We have one minute, 50 seconds to a Chindogu idea. Okay, I'll put back on the rules. Those are the Chindogu rules. Thank you, Tommaso. 
We have one minute, 10 seconds. Chindogu ideas. We're all creative. Come on. Something that happened to you that th there was no answer or solution for that thing you can design. It's your opportunity to design something. Thank you. Thank you. 45 seconds. We're almost there. I think some good ideas are coming up from here. 30 seconds. Chindogu ideas. You can draw. You can write down the bullets. I don't want a business plan right now. I don't want a marketing plan. I just want a Chindogu idea. 15 seconds. Five seconds. Yeah, my, my, it's my internal clock. <laughs> Thank you. OK. So probably you have like great ideas in your hands. So I want a volunteer. A volunteer. There's no right. There's no wrong. Yes. Oh, you're pointing to her. <laughs> she can do that. OK, welcome. Please come over here. Yeah, we need your, um, yeah, you have the mic. So she can come up stage. And um, <laughs> this is funny. She's going. Yeah. Bravo. Uh, here's a mic. <laughs> Hi. Nice to, nice to meet you. So your Chindogu idea. Uh, we were just uh, copying a bit your shoes with an umbrella, but then we were thinking to create a hat with umbrella. And then you will just press a button when it's raining, and then the umbrella will open. Something like that. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. I have something for you. You know that I'm coming from Mexico, right? So you have a Lucha Libre mask. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Be careful. OK, one more idea. I have another mask. OK, you guys. When you show the mask, everyone now is a volunteer. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Man? How are you? Nice to meet you. So, take it away. So, uh, our idea was to simply take a scissor and directly attach a trash can below it so that when you cut anything, it's directly trashed. You don't have to walk to the trash can and you're fine. That, that's <laughs> awesome. That, that is great. I have a. Okay. Um, it's just one, so you're going to have to wrestle for this one. <laughs> not, not here not right not now, but after the show, we can stream it too. No, no. Well, we're going to have uh, later on a little bit. Let's go. So, thank you, thank you, and, and uh, keep your paper and your ideas. And let's, let's, let's go ahead a little bit. Let, let's talk about dreams. It's, it's very important to, to have dreams, and I know that everyone has said that. But now with so many tools we have, we, we can make them, them true. And it happened to me many times, an idea that I had. And, and usually, uh, and I think you were from the programming side, that uh, you, you have a, a, a problem that you cannot solve. And you go to bed and you sleep, and then you wake up with a solution. And it happens to you. It's, and it's very important to go and sleep and, and also to have dreams, the things that you want to do. And, and maybe to, to jump out of the bed during the night and start like coding or doing stuff, and then your ideas come true. So this is a, um, 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 a quote from Walt. Um, we have to have courage to pursue them. It's not just be creative and, and come with good ideas. We have to implement them. We have to make them. So let's talk about innovation. And this is like a part of a kind of a show and tell thing. Soccer. I, I'm, I'm from Brazil. I know you guys. I'm, I don't know where you're from, but you, I know you kind of be from, from Europe. But soccer is a big thing also here. And I, I wanted to work with something related to soccer. And, and so this, this is not me. This is, this, is a, this is a player from my country, right? And so what I wanted to do was like to be able to watch the game on TV and then go to the computer and re-watch the, the, the play but uh, in 3D. 
this is a project that I did in, in 1998. And um, I got an award from Microsoft, the best web replay in the world. So you watch a game on TV. This was for the 1998 World Cup. So we would, you would watch a game on TV. And two minutes after a, a, a highlight, an interesting play, you could go on the web and navigate in 3D on the play. This was uh, uh, done in uh, Vermal, VRML. And it was like the whole system was around 50,000 lines of code. I used uh, Silicon Graphics O2 for graphics rendering. Uh, but everything was being rendered real time on a 486 machine. I don't know if it makes sense to you guys now. But it was 1998. So like um, domestic computers could process this in, in real time. So uh, here are um, a couple of uh, images of this project, 1998. So what we did, we would watch the game and get a, a, a still image and then like start putting the, the, the players and, and it was funny because some, some plays were easy to do. You see the player, the player's kicking the ball, and you calculate the distance because you know the size of the field. And then the, the, the plays, they start to be like really interesting and funny that we had like to, to re, redraw them and redesign them. And, and really, and you know, some are really bad to do the, the 3D thing. And, and it was a project like a couple of years ago. And uh, I used like motion capture. I wanted to learn about motion capture, and it was like very successful. Um, this this project. Okay, another um, subject: art. I, I I love art. I'm not an artist. Uh, I am, but but you know, I'm not like um, I, I cannot draw. Uh, this this is not mine. This is from another artist. And so again, I wanted to to bring art to. Um, to the computer so it would be more accessible. This was 1997, the first uh, virtual museum, Brazilian virtual museum. So what we did, it was Vermal 1.0. So you could apply textures and, and have like squares and you know very simple elements. And actually, 1997 was the second version. The first version was right after Vermal 1.0. And then we designed um, like more complex worlds that you could go and navigate in 3D inside the museums and galleries. This was 97. Now we have Google Arts a couple of years later. But you could go inside and chat and, and do different things uh, with art. And, and it's funny. Head mounted displays are coming back now. We saw some stuff going on. And it's inter interesting how the cycles are. Another dream that I had is is to work with a theme park. So um, I was able to design a couple of uh, theme parks and then implement many attractions for different theme parks. And uh, this one, it starts with a cow because there's, there's a funny story. Uh, I went to, to design a, a pavilion for a, a dairy company. And I wanted to know the, the, the plant and, and go into the ranch and see the cows. But um, what, what impressed me most was that I wanted to call the cow. I, I was calling the cow, and the cow would never come to talk to me. It was like so frustrating that I wanted to touch the cow. The cows are amazing. So I tried everything, every sound, everything, and, and didn't work. And I thought, you know, imagine if it was like a, a small kid doing this. It would hate the cow. I was almost hating the cow. So what we did, it was a moo meter. So a moo meter, the kids would yell and call the cows. And depending on the, on the, on the amplitude, the sound um, of, of the, your moo, so that's the, um, uh, the number of cows that would you know, come back and dance with you. So we did that in a very loud environment on a theme park. And our neighbors were very upset that they were loud. But the kids were so happy that we, we had this loud environment and a moo meter. So every, every piece that, that, that I do, that we do in the company now, they, they have like a story. Also, there's, we, we also, for, for this pavilion, we made a Tetra Pack, like a big one that was a nightclub for kids. Because kids, they, don't go, they can't go out at night. It's something 
that's aspirational because their parents can go out at night. They can't. So we meet a nightclub inside of a Tetra Pack, and then the kids would go there and, 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 and put the, the cow's ears, and they'd start dancing. And the cows would track the kids and follow them. Uh, but, but the kids are better than this. So the kids wanted to, to follow the cows, not the cows to follow them. So we had to redesign the system. Okay. Uh, by the year like 2000, I wanted to learn about GPS. And, and GPSs were very expensive. So in my school at NYU, we had, we had a GPS with a serial communication. So that's the story behind this. Okay. We had a kind of a family ritual in Brazil that um, in, in lunchtime, we'd wait for the whole family to get at home so we'd have lunch. Usually the last one to get home was my dad. He would go to the bank, he would, would run some errands, and so we'd be the last one to get. So we'd be like staying at the window, waiting for him to get in. When he would get in at the garage with the car, we'd like uh, um, say, uh, j just uh, serve food because he was um, coming in, like very Pavlovian, you know. You'd see him and it like start salivating. So I wanted to investigate the GPS thing. So this is my dad, this is the family part of the family. Um, so I made an installation called Where is Daddy? Okay. This 1999, I still had some hair. And um, so this is like, this is like very ugly, but the thing was, was, was covered, it was kind of a blob. So what this thing would do, if my, uh, we live in, 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 in Lagoa, in, in front of a big lagoon. So if my dad was in Leblon, the whole structure would be leaning towards the right side from the, the lagoon point, point of view. Um, if he was in, in Ipanema, he would like um, move a little bit in, in Copacabana and so forth. So I wouldn't know where my dad is based on the position and, and, and the, the shape of the, the, um, the Where's Daddy sculpture. If my daddy was really fast because he was driving, there would be a lot of light here. If he was walking at low light, if my daddy was uh, going up on a building, the whole thing would grow with motors. And when my dad would go um, in, in, in the garage, it shakes, it gets excited, so we know when it's time to, to serve food. So instead of like having data, like, like numbers, I just got you know, data and transformed into information and just the shape of the sculpture. And then where, where's Daddy was born, and it was like uh, it was showing a couple of shows in, in New York. This um, installation. So another thing, um, I, I wanted to work with promotions and like like a publicist, you know, like going and do promotions for companies. I ended up doing nine thousand promotions per year. In, in later on in, in in the company I was working with, but. Uh, we were doing things like this. This is like, uh, I think you, you know the brand. Maybe here it's called a little bit different, but uh, it's a deodorant. And so they, they were like targeting this, this type of uh, target group that, you know, uh, kids, teenagers. And so what we did is we threw a party to launch a product. And uh, we, we made a deal with uh, Playboy magazine girls to be there in the party. So the kids would go and like, wow, this like, interesting girls here and so the girls wouldn't even talk to them so it was like really bad for them so but uh, we would invite them over to the axificator so they would go into this capsule and like with the with, uh, uh, smoke and the product and after that all the girls would want to talk to you so they would think wow this is the effect of the the product so this is like uh, applying creative technology to to a brand a couple of um a couple of images of the party. Another one, nightclubs. I, I, I love nightclubs. I used to love even more. And so in, in 1998, we did the first interactive dance club in Latin America. What we did, like, we put like tap tiles and we would interpret mathematically how people were like stepping on those tiles and generate the music based on that. On the hands, you see some... Uh, cables, there will be accelerometers, there were like no wireless accelerometers um, affordable in the time, and we'll generate the, the, um, the videos and the graphics being displayed. In 2002, the, the Cuban government invited me to, to make a, an exhibit on, on, on a museum in Havana. What we did, we, we put sensors, and we were interpreting the behavior 
of museum goers. So if you see the kids like walking, you know, school kids in the museum, the, the, the sensors would like detect their behavior and then establish like a, a, a very vivid uh, environment like colors and the music, uh, really um, um, uh, fast music. If like uh, people like walking slowly, the whole environment would change, the colors and everything else. Thank you. And, and so, I <laughs> so uh, a couple of years later, um, I did like three parties for 3,000 people where they would establish the music. You, you know when you're dancing and there's a song that you don't like and you kind of like, yeah, I don't like this song. I just stop dancing. So in this case, it, it would know that you don't like the, the, the song uh, because there are less movement on the dance floor and they would switch uh, the song and the library of songs we're doing. So it's like a more natural thing. So there's like no DJs, you just talk into the environment. And this comes from, from my, my idea of like, if, if, if it's too hot, I just, you know, take my jacket off. But the, the, the environment is not changing because the, the change on my behavior. So this one helps to establish a dialogue between the environment and people. And, and there's like a feedback loop there where um, you change your behavior, the system detects and, change, uh, and changes its behavior, that changes your behavior. So there's like a conversation going on between the environment and people. And uh, this picture just put here because this guy looks very funny. But here is a sample. Uh, I don't have audio or... Now imagine that we had audio. Can you check? Hello? 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 Do, do we have audio? No, I think they all left. Hello? Okay, there's audio here. Uh, I know what I do. Problem solved, right? Okay, let's keep on going. Museums. Uh, I did a couple of pieces for different museums, uh, Anthropology Museum in, in Mexico, and, and but uh, we're working on a project um, for the um, National Museum of um, National History Museum of San Diego. But uh, we did an installation first that it was using uh, augmented reality that now it's very common, but we started working with this like in 2002. So what we did is like a body modification shop, and, and, and you go and, and, and you browse what you want to change in yourself, you know, um, your abs or your arm or your face, and then you go, you, you go to the uh, feeding room, and then you just see how you, bec how you became a new thing. So this is like a T-Rex 3D thing, and, and this is like very geeky. It's not just Mario Bros, but it's like 8-bit Mario Bros. So you can like change yourself with this uh, technology. We did, we did that for like a, a very um, broad public and uh, different ages, and, and people loved it. Because we know about augmented reality, and we see like on YouTube videos, but when people interact with this, it's really cool for them. Okay. Um, this an electroencephalogram, this is a EEG. This is like uh, something that uh, when you use it, it's, it's because something might not be okay, right? Because you have doubts. So you go to a hospital and, and, you, and you have a, a use a, an EEG. But now they're, they're more affordable and uh, we bought an EEG. And, uh, and we started like doing code for the EEG. This is like a very dramatic picture of myself, like turning on and off a light. And it's very easy to do this. You just get an EEG, you're reading the, the data from it, and, and you just get like processing, and, and, and then you just uh, process the information. You can do all this cool stuff, all this cool stuff. This is like, last year I was like touring different countries to make uh, brain art performances. Why not? So I put like an EG, and, and it helps. My, my haircut helps a lot with EG, so it's easier to, to fit. And then I just listen to a song, and then, you know, you just have, have art based on your emotions. And I have like a, a quick video here. So uh, this is what, uh, there is a lot of data that comes out of an EG. So, 
So we got an engagement, excite excitement, uh, meditation. And this is, um, we did this performance in Campus Party Quito, for the first time we did. And uh, the subject is sitting there in, I don't know. I don't know. And so his emotions would turn, you know, on and off dots based on the parameters that we defined. Yeah. It's working now? Nice. So it was, it was funny, uh, the kid asked for the song, and they were like sitting down, afraid of, uh, to use the technology, and let me see. So this is a result of what he was feeling at the time. But I want to show you something, let me see. Look, look at him here, let's see. He got really excited with it. So we would print this thing and, and like like a giant print and people would kill to have one of those things because they'd never repeat. Okay. So telephony. Um, I think by, by the year 2000, I started like using the, the phone not as a phone to do different things. Uh, I made an installation for MTV that it would go to a movie theater and get your phone and then call different numbers. So I would call the number of uh, the guitar, you would call the number of uh, the bass and then drums and then with cell phones we would like uh, make our own uh, our, uh, a song that would be playing together, people um, not known. And and then um, again in Cuba, I, I, I gave a lecture about how to hack cell phones. And it was funny. I asked, how many of you have cell phones in the time? And it was like just two. But they were so interested in how to hack a telephone that, that they all went there. So what, what I did, and it's very easy that it should do, um, is get a DTMF uh, decoder. DTMF for the, the sounds of the phone. When, when you press a number, you have like a specific frequency. So it's very easy to decode this. So you just have serial communication. You can do really cool stuff with this. You can change the, the color of a lighting of a building. You can control different stuff. So this is like a great exercise to do. And OK, what, what we did it was like a candy dispenser. Um, this is also for like a BMW is renting a lot, this thing from us. Um, it's, it's about engaging people in a conversation with brands. It's not just give, giving the pen. OK, uh, yeah, I remember your brand because you gave me your pen. So the, what we did here is like as a candy dispenser, um, and you call the dispenser, the dispenser answers, and start like asking you questions about the brand. If you get it right on your cell phone, it gives you like uh, peanuts and candies and different stuff. So I'll give you something, but you have to give me something. So the concept here is very strong. It's not like, I'll give you the pen because you're walking by my booth on, a, on an expo. It's like, you got to know something about my brand, and then I'll reward you for that. Uh, painting. This, this is not me again. And, and painting. Uh, we did this installation. It's interactive painting. This is like an urban intervention. We found a white wall on the neighborhood very close to, to our office. We went there at night. And, and then this is a, a very intuitive tool. Just get, you know, like a, a paint roll, and then it's like painting. And then you find different things behind this. Could be video, could be images. And what are we doing? We're tracking the, the roll. So we did that in a, in a couple of places now. We're, doing, we're going to different places to do like interactive painting. And this is using processing. And the first version, and then C++, the second one that's, of course, faster. OK, a couple of more examples on ecology. You know when you're you know, walking on the streets and you don't have a battery? And uh, again, this, this is not me. I'm, I'm saying in general. Um, so what we did, like uh, this 
urban furniture that has pedals. And in f five minutes pedaling, you have around like one hour of charge for your cell phone. So we, we did that, a couple of companies bought, like Toyota bought us some. Uh, we, there's a new theme park that bought some of those in, like, in different shapes. We have a version that gives you free Wi-Fi. So for, for, for the city, it's good because it's not getting energy from the city, just generating uh, energy yourself. And we did that with a, with, with a, in a kid's park, and it was awesome. They didn't have cell phones, but they would see pedals. They would pedal, and the grown-ups would come later and like not doing anything at all. Just uh, plug it in and, and get the energy that the kids um, transformed. And this, this is last year's. We, and it's a project that we did. It's called Go de Bicicleta. And, and, and I don't know if someone from Brazil here, but you know, Go de Bicicleta is like uh, the kick that you do when you're... Oh, she, she's from Brazil. So you can explain them. Oh, more people here. Cool. And so it's La Chilena. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so what, what we did, it was uh, Green Nation Fast. It was like Rio Plus 20 event. It's like big, um, big event in Brazil. So they, they asked us to talk about the, the energy problem. And in Brazil, you know, if you don't talk about soccer, almost. I, I'm kidding. But I would use soccer as, as a way of telling the kids about uh, the problem. So we made a, a soccer tournament. So you go to a bike, and then you would pick your soccer team. You know, like the, the four big teams in, in, in Rio, like Vasco, Flamengo, Fluminense, Botafogo. And then you would pick your soccer team and start pedaling. Every half a watt generated, you would score a goal. So we have like a whole library of uh, great classic goals from the, the teams. And, and at, at the end, after a minute of uh, like pedaling, biking, and generating energy, you would uh, um, share the energy that you generated on Facebook and Twitter. We had like more than 9,500 goals scored in six days. We had... I don't know if you know this girl, Giselle Binchen. She was like pedaling with us. Uh, we were in major newspapers around the world. We had uh, the presidents of the, 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 the soccer teams there, uh, famous players. And suddenly the, the whole thing scaled with a, with a considered uh, a good idea to talk about um, a subject that sometimes is not um, that engaging. And then we transformed um, the experience in, in, in another way. So. Uh, this we did that. Uh, we, we did that now for uh, Christmas. Last Christmas is a Christmas tree that uh, you you, uh, you you share your energy with Christmas energy. So again, you pedal and start like lighting the the Christmas tree. And uh, again, this video has nothing to do with the presentation. So keep up with me here in the screen. And so so people would be like lighting on the the light. Uh, the, the, the star on the top, when the star was all, all lighted, it would uh, get the energy from the whole tree and then do a light show. And it was there for like a month in, in a theme park. And this is uh, the last subject about um, social media. We wanted to do cool things with social media. There was a big event in Mexico for a, a company called Televisa. as a <clears throat> TV company. So they had this... Uh, event that they wanted people to amplify. So well, we, we gave them uh, wristbands with uh, unique IDs and re registered them their um, social media accounts, like uh, Facebook, Twitter. So if they liked something, they would go to one of those like stations and touch their hands. So if they, if they liked something about um, the Televisa Foundation or about the city or about the lecture that they saw, they would touch their hands automatically would post on Facebook and their accounts and also tweet. So we had 2,500 people registered. And in five days, we had 650,000 posts. So it was like a trend topic. Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas invited us to, to go there and talk about technology. So we have, like different, we have now different versions of this, but this really you know, cool activity could be like a fashion accessory, and you'll be like um, tweeting without uh, writing stuff in your um, cell phones or computers. Okay, this is like we did a, a month and a half ago. So I'll show you the video first, and I'll talk about it. with 
Okay, um, this is uh, for a client of ours, and they, they were launching um, a new fan page on, on Facebook and other social media. So they, they, they wanted us to, um, to design something that would be interesting for their target, so they would generate their, their, their base, their, their um, fan page base. So we did that on an event on a weekend. So what was the idea? Is to, to put kids to, to run in the treadmill and, and throw them a bunch of stuff while they had to read a text. So they had to pay attention on the screen, present themselves, and run with all these things going on. And then it's like a 30-second thing. They would, of course, um, sign a, a disclosure <laughs> that they, they wouldn't sue me. And, and they would run and, and record a 30-second um, video. So they would like register on our system and ask their friends to go online to their to their uh, Facebook page, for instance, and, and the client's page, and vote. Uh, the one who had more votes of the day would get like great awards, like iPads or, or different stuff. That way, people instead of the brand, they would call their friend. They would be the ambassadors of the brand and ask their friends to vote. So uh, after the weekend, we had already a uh, base of more than 5,000 followers and, 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 and the base for their um, page, what is like a very important number on a weekend uh, operating um, eight hours a day uh, during two days. So it was like a, a great activity that we designed. And conclusion um, is first, we have to go back to be kids. And, and, and you know, I, I know that, that the system is telling us to not to do things and, and to do things the same way. We have to, you know, to, 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 to break this a little bit and go back to thinking. It's better than knowing. So we have to go back um, um, to be kids. Uh, we have to, to keep on dreaming because the, the, this is going to feed um, ourselves and, and give us uh, ideas on, on what to do. But then we have to do things. We have to go and do things, not like to have an idea and wait for someone else to do. You know, when anybody, oh, I had this idea two years ago. I just saw that Google did that or, or these guys did that. So it's very important to go and do. And sometimes we think that we don't have the tools and we might not at the moment, but we talk to people, we, we collaborate, we, we get people from different um, uh, points of views, different disciplines and talk to them. And, and it happens that there's a... a you know, um, many friends of mine here, and, and it's good when we get together and we talk about new, new ideas, and then we establish a plan to turn this new idea in, into a, a project and, and innovation. So, thank you very much for, for your attention and patience, and I'm here to answer a couple of cash, a couple questions if you have them, and it was right on time. So, have questions, please, or or you don't have questions, you just want to say something, or if you want to sing, or... Uh, he wants to sing. Um, for a creative technology company like yours, time to just play and research and development without having to be focus on paid projects, do you find you guys get that balance right? Well, it's hard. It's hard because when, when you're doing like a great idea, um, it comes a client with money and ask you to do something else. So what you have to do is like to work extra hours. <laughs> no, if, if we cannot stop doing the things that we wanted. So we, we have, of course, the, the, the client will help us, you know, to fulfill our dreams with, with money. We're doing this. So it's very egocentric things because we sell our ideas to the clients and they are paying for this. Then what do we do? Sometimes what we do is like kind of direct the client's ideas to our ideas. And it just happened today, we were talking to a friend, mm, I have this idea, I'll find a client to pay for this. It's not that we want to sell a specific te technology, but there's, there are ways to fit sometimes the technology you want to work on, to do R&D, and, and the client's needs. So we, we work with both. But uh, usually when there's like plenty of work um, commissioned by clients, uh, the R&D time decreases. So that's when... We, we do like fun rounds of uh, weekend work and they are very, very productive because we do really fun way. And, and usually our prototypes, they, they take like two days to do. It's not like six months of doing this. So we've been doing this and, and companies like Microsoft are hiring us. Um, Facebook, we just closed an alliance with them because we're cheaper and faster 
than them because they have like a big structure. So we come up with ideas, sometimes together, sometimes it's their idea, and we can do prototype like in a couple of hours or in a couple of days. So we, we try to be fast. It's just proof of concept, it's not the final project, but then with the technology we have today, the, the, usually everything you can do in a couple of hours or a couple of days as a proof of concept. Thanks. Hi. Hi. First, thank you for your very good and uh, thank you. amusing presentation. And I have a got informal question. How did you get the great pictures? They are so amazing <laughs> for your presentation. I'm sorry? How you had very great pictures all over your presentation, <laughs> and I w just would like to know if you made them yourself or have a, a great source. Like the pictures? Yeah. Um, many of them are from our, our own projects, and yeah, we're, we're trying to document the things we're doing. We're very bad at doing this, so we just launched a new website now, uh, and, and we're hiring like, professional photographers to, to help us like, to make videos and so, like, taking the, the pictures of the projects. And sometimes it's good because you find like, a, a very nice angle of your project that sometimes from far away is not that nice, <laughs> and then, and then you, you, you accomplish like, um, to tell the story based on that. Thanks. Here, one more question, questions, comments. So thank you very much. I'll be down here if you have like uh, personal questions. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Where's the kid? Uh oh, hello, hello. Okay, the 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 two that ask me questions, I I I have your your masks. So. And um and and the other kid, I have your mask here. It's white one with cool things. Wait, where's the kid that was sitting here? Ah, oh, here here he goes. Mask. It's your mask here. Thank you.
ladies and gents. Our next presenter is Mr. Simon Thethi from Tech City News, and he will speak. He will speak about our, will London retain its capital uh, city in Europe. <laughs> I'm going to change that. <laughs>